He told Lois that he wanted to go with me everywhere I went in my handbag. The day that he passed, of course I rang them early in the morning, she turned up on the door with a beautiful handbag. She said, I thought Ali deserved to have his own handbag. So he fits in there perfect. He was just deteriorating. The spinal doctors discovered that it was melanoma and it was already stage four. So Alan's decision after pondering and researching was to have no treatment. That was his journey. And, um, and I think, I believe fully that he got longer not having any of that treatment. And he was still up in his chair every day. His whole life was conversation. It was social interaction, having a beer with someone, having a coffee. He had little entourages of people that would come and pick him up and take him out and they go shopping. It's not morbid, it's like it's gonna happen to all of us. Wouldn't it be great if you could go out the way you wanted to? That's the other thing about being able to do palliative care here, that you grieve as you go through the journey and it's actually much easier. So he doesn't have a resting place because this is his resting place. They ring up all the nieces and nephews, can I have Unc for a sleepover? Alan would love that. I'm sure people have different uh, attitudes on Al in the handbag, but anyway, everyone's loved him so far, so. And he's gonna be around for a long time, hanging out with me. But at the end of the night, I'll go, is anyone, everyone, so who's got Al? And there'll always be a bloke with him on the handbag. I've got him, I've got him. I know it's a crack up.